Well, good morning, everyone. How are we? Are we all ready to finish our spooky, scary stories this morning? I know I am. But you know what? I have had so much fun this week um, doing these Facebook Lives with you. Um, I just need to say hello to Tori and her son. I hope you are still with us. Uh, massive hello to Gregory. I hope you're still enjoying it as well. And Summer as well. I hope your vampire story is coming on really nicely as well. I can't wait to read it. We've gone through so much already, haven't we? On Monday, do you remember, we spoke about the genre and how we're going to be keeping the genre or the type of story um, and we've picked a scary story this week. Um, we also spoke about the audience and how to make sure that it stays relative and engaging for the right audience. And on Monday, we also made up our main characters. We've been using the storyboard and uh, my, my story template as well. That if you haven't already got these, you can grab them off my website as well. Um, but we've been using these to put all of our ideas down throughout the week, haven't we? So we did the genre ideas, the location for our story, uh, the main character ideas and the problems and the solutions that our character is going to face. And we went through all of that, didn't we? And then yesterday, we the first thing we did was to edit our story, wasn't it? So we edited all of our story together. Um, we spoke about vocabulary. And hopefully, on the back of your storyboard, you wrote down all of the scary words you could think of, because that's what I tried to do yesterday very quickly with you. And hopefully you took some of those scary words, some of that scary vocabulary, and you've tried to use as much of them in your story as possible. But what I want you to do is before we start, it's really important that while we've got fresh eyes and fresh ideas, that we go back and have a look over our story and try and add as many of those scary words, as much of that scary vocabulary as we can. Try and add that into our story. Now, while I was having my breakfast this morning, I already went through and edited my story so that this would be a little bit quicker today. Um, and also, I don't want you to get bored just watching me edit my story. So I'm quite happy with what I've got with my story. And the other thing, I'm not going to read all of my story to you today because I'm actually going to do it in a separate video. So if you'd like to see this story, um, once we've come up with what it's going to be called and things like that, I'll put it into a separate video and you can watch it all there. But I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you what I wrote in the middle. So going back to our storyboard, we had Simon, the main character, and I decided that Simon's problem was that he was going to be scared by a ghost. And it was set in a haunted mansion, in a haunted house. So Simon was going to be scared by a ghost. And the solution was that Simon and the ghost were going to become friends. So in the middle section of my story, Basically, I wrote that Simon was going to go and look for a noise. He heard a noise at night time, so he goes to look for it, and he's really scared. He doesn't know what it's going to be, and he searches all around this house, this old house that he's just moved into, and he thinks it's haunted. He goes round, and he looks all upstairs, and he can't find it. So he's about to go back to bed when he hears the noise again. So he goes downstairs and he looks in all the rooms downstairs and he can't find it again until he goes to the kitchen and he hears this crash, bang, wallop. All of this noise coming from the kitchen. So he goes in and he shuts the kitchen cupboard from where the noise is coming from and puts the chair in front of it, thinking that he's trapped whatever it is inside the kitchen cupboard. So he puts a chair in front of it, and then all of a sudden, a, a head floats through the doorway and through the chair, and it's a ghost, 
the ghost comes out of the cupboard. Anyway, Simon's very scared at the beginning. But then, once Simon asks the ghost why he's there, the ghost tells Simon that he's actually just really hungry. And he was just looking for some food. And I thought Simon could help the ghost find some food. And that's how they become friends. So that's what I wrote yesterday. That's what I wrote into my story. And um, like I said, I'll put this all in another video so you can actually see what my story was like and whether you like it or not. So while I edited it this morning, I tried to make sure that I put all of my scary vocabulary into my story as much as I could so that as you read it, you really do feel that this is a scary story, all right? And what I would like you to do is go back and, and do all of those for yourselves. Put all those scary words in for yourself. But now I've got the middle, and I'm really happy with that. I need to think of an ending. And that's where I'm going to use the last box of my storyboard, just there. And I'm going to think of an ending. How could I end this story? Well, I guess Simon could wake up and it all be a dream. Now that is a really boring ending, isn't it? I think we could do much better than that. Because I don't think it's very engaging. And I think we've had so much excitement in the story that for Simon to wake up and it all be a dream just feels a bit boring. So I'm going to get rid of that idea. And hopefully none of you will write that either. Hopefully you'll have a really good imagination and come up with an excellent ending to your story. So I'm going to put... Well, what could happen? I guess... Simon's parents could find out about the ghost. Now, would Simon's parents be angry that there's a ghost in the house? Or would they be scared? Because maybe they couldn't have their friends over because their friends might be scared of the ghost as well. Or maybe they could be really, really happy and they could all love having a ghost in the house and maybe make it part of their family. So I'm going to put Simon's mum and dad find out about the ghost. Now remember, you don't have to write in these boxes. You can draw your pictures. And I think that's a fantastic way of telling a story and also reminding us what our ideas are. So if you prefer to, you can absolutely draw your ideas down. So I've written mine just to be quick. And then you need to go and write the ending to my story. So I'm going to get my pencil. Now, in my story, Simon had just gone back to bed for the night after he gave the ghost some food. So, the next morning, when Simon's mum and dad came downstairs for breakfast, instead of finding the kitchen in a horrible mess, it was sparkling clean. The ghost had given it a good tidy after Simon had gone back to sleep as a way of saying thank you. I like that. That morning, Simon decided to tell his parents what had happened the night before. Of course, they didn't believe him. Well, why would they believe him? Because it, it would be quite silly if you came downstairs and told your parents that you'd made friends with a ghost. Do you think they would believe you? Then I think his dad will say, don't be silly, Simon. The noises were just the pipes. It's an old house. This house isn't haunted, his mum reassured him. But then, suddenly, 
the ghost poked his head through the middle of the table. Simon's dad threw his cereal over his shoulder in a fright as his mum dropped the jug of orange juice on the floor. See, I told you, Simon said, as he reassured his parents that the ghost was really actually friendly. I quite like that. I'm going to work on that a bit more later today. And uh, like I said, I'll put that into another little video for you so you can see what I come up with by the end. But that's the gist of my story. That's the, the ending that I quite like. But you know what? We've forgotten one very, very important thing about stories. And it's the first thing that anyone will ever read before they even read your story. And that is, of course, the title. And it's really important. And I'll tell you something about writing titles. I always write my title after I've written my story. And there's a reason I do that. If I wrote my if I wrote my title first, I have to write a story about that title and that can be very very difficult. But if I write my story first, I can write about anything I can imagine and quite often the title is already in my story. So let's go back to our storyboard and have a look at what we've got. So I know I've got Simon and a haunted mansion, so it could be Simon and the haunted mansion, but Imogen's story, do you remember I was telling you that Imogen sent over to me, and that's on my website if you want to see Imogen's story, was called Grace and the Haunted Mansion. So I don't want to take Imogen's idea. So Simon and the ghost become friends, so it could be Simon and the friendly ghost, but I think there's already quite a popular story with that as well. So I think I quite like the idea of the ghost being hungry and Simon becoming friends and helping to find some food for the ghost. So I'm going to call my story Simon and the Hungry Ghost. I'm going to write that on my storyboard just so I remember it for later. Simon and the Hungry Ghost. Quite like that. And thinking of titles can be really difficult, but hopefully if you look through the ideas that you have on your storyboard, you'll find an idea in there, and I'm sure your grown-ups will help you as well. And grown-ups, please, would you uh, put them the titles in the comments? I would love to see what you guys have been writing and the exciting ideas that you guys are coming up with. And also, it will help with other people coming up with their own ideas as well. So now is a perfect time to put the title of your story in the comments below. Now, we're going to stop there in a moment and we don't have a, we're, I'm not going to be live tomorrow um, because I'm going to give you guys the chance to go away and think about your story, think about all the editing and think about all the things that we've been over this week and give you a chance to actually take what you've written on your, uh, on your story sheet and you can actually put it onto either a new piece of paper or you could download that sheet again and you could redo it um, on that sheet. But however you want to present your story and you can draw pictures as well. And then on Friday morning, I'll be back at 11 o'clock and I will be presenting your stories live. So I would love to see what you've written this week. Now, if you want your story to feature on Friday morning, then you need to get them to me by six o'clock on Thursday night, all right? And don't worry, if you're watching this after Friday, don't worry, you can absolutely send them in to me. Please do keep sending them in because I will put them all on my website as well. And to send your stories in, 
all you need to do is go onto my website and it's become an author or send a story. You'll be able to find it on my website, grantcoper.com. I'll put the link in the description of this video later on. You can send your story over to me. And like I said, on Friday, I'll be presenting them. And I am so, so excited to see what you've been writing. And then next week, it's really exciting as well. But I don't know if I should tell you yet. No, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you yet. I will tell you on Friday. I nearly forget this every day, don't I? The top secrets. And these are my secret writing tips. And again, on there, it's top secret writing tips. So let's see what today's are. Number one, reread your writing another day with fresh eyes. You might get new ideas. And that's really important. That's what I do all the time. And the second tip is think of your title after you've written your story. It will often be already written in your story. Like I said, think of your title after you've written the actual story. And sometimes that might be a lot easier for you. Well, I am really looking forward to reading your stories. Enjoy your time. Oh, and on Friday, that's what I was going to say. If you've got any questions you would like to ask me, Friday is a perfect time to ask them. So get them sent in if you want to put them in the comments. Questions about being an author or how I write stories or where I got ideas from, those sorts of questions. If you've got anything like that that you'd like to find out, put them in the comments below and I will ask answer them all on Friday. All right? Anyway, guys, have a lovely day. Enjoy yourselves today. And I will see you bright and early, 11 o'clock on Friday morning. See you soon. Bye.